Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's have a look on making your photos from a phone camera look better. Recently, I was cleaning up my old iPhone and have encountered a couple of photos I was going to throw away, as they looked not so nice as expected. But I thought it might be interesting if I tried to make them look better using Affinity Photo. So, this first photo looked great on a small screen, but when I opened it up in a computer, it looked hazy and unsharp. Let's apply some Affinity Magic to make it look better. I will need to sharpen it and probably pop up the colors as it really looks faded. I remember when I took this photo, it was more colorful. I think this is important when you are editing your own photos, try to remember why you took the photo and how you experienced that moment. The adjustments you are going to apply at the end should give back the same feeling when you took the photo. To sharpen it up, I'm going to duplicate the layer first and then apply a live unsharp mask filter to it. I'm going to really crank up the values so we get this nice strong sharpen effect. Awesome! When I turn on and off this layer, you can see much better how the original was hazy and had this white glow in it. The side effect of this adjustment is that the candles have become too shiny. To get rid of this shiny glow, I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to darken. By setting it to darken, we still sharpen the image, but without the additional shine. That looks much better. If we compare it again with the original, it definitely is better. The next thing I would like to do is to get a little bit of the colors back. The candles had a much deeper color in my memory. For this, I'm going to add an inverted S-curve adjustment in soft light blend mode. That looks pretty awesome. Let's have another quick look at the before and the after. I'm really happy I didn't delete this photo. Time to move on to the next photo, which was taken in Firenze, Italy during the golden hour. I have a couple of different shots which turned out great, but this one was an exception. But let's see what we can do to make this photo more interesting. Before applying color adjustments, I will first crop the image to the part I want to keep and fix the perspective. The bridge is not really horizontal and the buildings on the left look a bit strange. Let me make a copy of it and add a guideline for myself. By the way, you can add guidelines by enabling the rulers from the view menu or a shortcut key command R and then drag a guide from the ruler. Just make sure before dragging a guideline that you have the select tool selected. Now I can rotate the image and try to get the buildings on the left aligned closely to the guideline. Now I'm going to really zoom out. Mostly when making perspective and alignment changes you have a better feel what looks correct. Once the rotation is ready I will add a live perspective filter and again adjust it in a way it feels natural. This looks about right. Before moving on, I will crop one more time as we rotated the image. We just want to make sure we have no strange corners. A quick look on the before and the after. Not bad, looks more like I remember it. Another thing that I remember is that the sky was much more interesting than what we see right now. I will apply a merge visible first before continuing and this layer will be the base for the next adjustments. As mentioned, I want to get back that feeling of the golden hour and I want to use as much of the data in the photo we already have. I'm going to duplicate the image and apply a high pass to it. Let's put the radius all the way to the max. You might notice how the clouds in the sky come more to life. I want to use this layer to make the sky more interesting. As the sky is quite bright in the original, I'm going to apply the subtract blend mode. This will really darken the image, but have a look at the sky, so much more interesting. I want to use this as a base to merge down. So either I can do a merge visible and use that, or I can make a group of it. 
Just make sure the group contains a copy of the original from the bottom. Now, to blend this in, I will use the pin lined blend mode. This brightens things up a little bit, but to make it really work, we need to change the blend range. And make sure it only gradually applies from the shadows to the highlights. That looks awesome. A quick look at the before and the after. It is already becoming a different photo. Now the last step we applied really darkens the image. And in my memory, the buildings were not that dark. So the next step would be to lighten it up. I'm going to apply the same principle again. Make a copy. Apply a high pass filter to it. But this time, I will set the blend mode of the high pass to hard light. This sharpens the image, but also brightens it. I'm going to blend this in with the bottom darker image using blend ranges. I can keep it at normal blend mode, but I prefer to set the blend mode to lighten, so I know later that this layer has been used to lighten the image. I'm going to group it first, so I can apply a blend range to it. I mentioned a couple of times in the previous videos, there is a glitch that when you apply a light filter, the blend ranges doesn't get applied. By grouping, we can get around this glitch. In the blend range, I can control how I blend the darker and the lighter layer with each other to get a more pleasing and realistic effect. Amazing. Quick look at the before and the after. Not bad. I'm also going to apply the same tricks I used at the beginning of the video. A copy of the original, apply an unsharp light filter in dark and blend mode, followed by an inverted S-curves adjustment in soft light blend mode. Let me also adjust the blend range of the inverted S-curve. Well, I think the soft line blend mode for the curves adjustment is a little bit too soft. So I'm going to change that from soft light to color burn and modify the blend range so it gets stronger again. To control it, I will adjust its opacity. I'm just trying to recreate what's in my memory from this photo. The image should be more yellowish and reddish, especially the clouds were not that white. To fix that, I will add a selective color adjustment and play with the values until I have the desired effect, but then stronger, as I will be setting this selective color adjustment to soft light to blend them out. As a final step, I will fine-tune the opacities of the layers to make it look more natural. If I move the original layer to the top, we can compare the before and the after. I definitely feel that the after captures that moment much better than the original. I hope you liked this video. I have showed a couple of tips and ideas on how to get back into love with your bad batch of photos from a phone. At the end, all the photos have memories as they are snapshots in time and you should never delete a photo in my opinion. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Keep safe and until the next video.